Hey, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Bible Verse and Prayer. Hope everybody's been having a great week so far. I hope that uh, these little daily Bible readings and prayers have been helping y'all out. Uh, please, if anybody has any prayer requests, please leave them below in the comments and uh, we can start praying. The Bible says where two or more are gathered together, He is there. So the more people that pray for your prayer requests, you know, the more chance uh, Jesus hears it. <laughs> All right, so now we're on uh, Matthew chapter 7. Well, let's start with the word of prayer. Father, Lord, it's thank you and praise you for protecting us all, keeping us all safe throughout this week. Thank you and praise you for just watching over us, Lord, and just, just allowing us to fellowship with one another and just read your word, Father, Lord. I thank you and praise you for just this, allow this technology to spread your word and touch and witness to many people throughout the world. I love you, Lord, and praise you, Lord. Allow this, this scripture we're going to read today just to fill us and guide us, Father. Thank you and praise you, Lord. Amen. All right, let's get after it. So, judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye may, it shall, it, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mot that is in thy brother's eye? But consider it not the beam that is in thine own eye. So that's, you know, that's the saying that's like, why are you looking at the splinter in other people's eyes whenever you have a friggin' piece of wood in your eye? You know, so it's, and those first three verses is saying, just don't judge other people. Let them be. You know, if someone makes you mad, whatever. If you see somebody doing something silly, whatever. You know, they'll be judged in their own time. Don't stress yourself out or worry and try to judge them yourself. Or how wilt thou say to thee, brother, let me pull out the splinter in your eye and and don't worry about the wood in my eye <laughs> you are a hypocrite first cast out the beam of your own eye and then you shall be able to clearly see to cast out the splinter in your brother's eye so just right just right there jesus says dude don't worry about other people's deal with your stuff first and then you might be able to help other people out give not that which is holy unto the dogs Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest I trample them under their feet, and turn again, and render you. Ask you, it shall be given, you seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will give it a serpent. If you then begin evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go, go in. Because the sh straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. That's my favorite verses. You know, it's written differently, but the way I interpret that is, if you follow the big, broad path that everybody goes through, that's the worldly path. That's going to lead you to destruction. I mean, that's the devil's way. It's going to, he's going to make it as easy as possible to lead you off of God's path. And right there Jesus says, because if you go into the straight and narrow way, which is, it leads you into life. That's God's path. I mean, he, he has a path. As soon as you're born, Jesus has a path for you. God has a path for you. The devil's going to do all he can to lead you off of Jesus' path. And don't worry, I mean, no one's perfect. Everybody stumbles. Yeah, you might stumble and you take the devil's path, but God will give you that, op that, that option just to get back on his path. You might miss some blessings that he, he had ordained along the way, but as long as you get back into his path, you're guaranteed the most ultimate blessing, which is heaven. Okay. Uh, Beware of the false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but in a way they are raving wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? 
Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is, is chopped down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he hath, that hath doth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And when will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work in in the iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doth admit them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doth them not, shall be like a fool who built his house upon the sand. And when the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. That's amazing. It's right there. Jesus is your house upon the rock. As long as you, like, his last two verses, last three chapters, five, six, and seven have been about how to be a good Christian, what you need to do, what you don't need to do. If you can follow those three chapters as best as you can, you're going to build your house upon the rock. So when the devil throws the storms and bad things at you, your house won't fall. But if you don't follow what's in these three chapters, you're going to be like the fool who built his house upon the sand. And when the devil throws things at you, you're going to fall and it's not going to be good. All right, let's uh, end with the word of prayer. Jesus, Lord, I just thank you and praise you for the guidance you've given us these past few days. Just thank you and praise you for your word and just what it can do to us and fill us for your love and show us what we need to do and what we don't need to do. I just love you, Lord, and praise you. I just lay my sins and transgressions at your feet, Father, Lord, at your cross. I just ask you, Lord, just to forgive us for our sins. Just wash through us. Fill us with your love and peace and kindness. Bless us and go with us throughout the rest of this week and the weekend. Protect us and watch over us. I love you, Lord, and praise you, Lord. Amen. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, you'll have a good one. Bye.